national anthem. Tonight, the Star Spangled Banner will be performed by the MHS Big Blue Marching Band under the direction of Dr. Joel Gittle, Director of Bands at Manhattan High School. Our colors are presented by the Color Guard from American Legion Boat 17, represented tonight by Mason Lutz, Marvin Ketterer, and Chris Dunham. Roger, you can move back one now so you can get higher. Okay. But you don't have to. You can't do that. <laughs> you get, get a little more wind blocked up here. However, I'm putting my hood up in case something comes flying out of that window again. You forgot about that, didn't you? Not on your head, brother. Guys are near enough to the camera where they can pick on your pick up on your conversations a little bit. So just keep that in mind. What? 
really close to the camera and he's okay. very good at sound on, so if you guys have a private conversation, it's probably not the best thing to have it because it will be loud on air. Our continued thanks to the Manhattan High Booster Club for their support of Manhattan High activities and athletics. Without their outstanding support, many of the amenities that our students rely on would not be possible.
Touchdown, a 59-yard 
Long snappers number 92, Chris Kingley. Kickers number 99, Grady Jessup. Kicking off for Derby, number 99, Grady Jessup. Back to return, number 16, Dwayne Newby. Number 5, Charles Morgan. And number 2, Game Summerlin. Number two, Gabe Summerlin fields the ball back at the six-yard line. Gets out near the 23, tackled by number 43, Mason Hopper, and number eight, Gavin Bonnetfield. Ball is at the 24-yard line. Manhattan will have first and 10 from their 24. Number 33, Jaden Hudley. Short gain, tackle in the middle by number six, Brent Pasqual. Gets out to the 26 for a gain of two, brings up second and eight. Tackle by number five, Demarion Baker. 
second and one from the 18. Passes complete for number three, Braxton Park. Number four, Cole Reedy. Passes complete 
We'll move the ball back to the Derby 46 yard line. So they will have it second and second and 18. the 21 yard line. Number 14, Carter Aslan, gets out to the 25-yard line for a gain of three. Brings up second and seven. Tackle on the play by number six, Britton Pasquale. Jaden Hudley gets through. 
Tackle on the play by number 15, Easton Springs. Gain is out to the 39 yard line for a gain of eight. That's enough yardage for a Manhattan high. First down. First and 10, Manhattan from the 39. Number 14, Carter Athlet. <coughs> Counters back to the left side, gets out to the 43 yard line. He's tripped up by number 15, Easton Splane. Gain of four on the play, brings up second and six. recognize and thank those men and women from Kansas and around the country that have served or are serving in the armed forces. As we celebrate this Veterans Day, established by President Woodrow Wilson in 1919 to honor those veterans serving in the First World War, it is now extended to honor all of those who have served. Please stand as we take a moment to recognize the brave men and women of the armed forces for their service. Yeah. 
half of the play from number 14, Carter Aslan, is intended for number 33, Jaden Hudley. Falls incomplete. Tight coverage by number 24, Martel Jackson. Incompletion brings up third and 10 from the 45.
And number three, oh, he's going to take it. Braxton Clark, a rushing touchdown for him on the left side, and that'll give Derby the lead. Braxton Clark, a great run there. Some miscommunication there on the defense. He basically went untouched. An amazing drive for Derby to start off the second quarter. It is now 14 to seven. Here's the extra point and there's flags on the field that'll be stopped. Nine thirty left to go in the uh, second quarter. In the other game at this side of the bracket, early in the game, Washington Monroe and Wichita East are tied seven seven late in the first yeah, quarter. Okay, they will for the second time try the extra point. Jessup will kick it and almost blocked, but that goes in through the uprights, and that makes the score 14 to 7. Derby in the lead. An amazing drive for Derby to open up the second quarter, and if you look there, Jonathan Willie did almost block that kick, but an amazing drive. Deshaun Brain pass and then finishing it off with a Braxton Clark touchdown run. That is what they want to see. And the Derby fans are here and they're loud tonight. And this makes it 9.30 left to go in the second quarter. We've seen the Derby offense come out and just destroy our defense so far in this game. Oh yeah, our passing coverage has got to get a bit better. And Braxton Clark is doing a great job looking for his options and finding the best one available. We saw there on that number two game pass about 43 yards there. Yeah, destroy might be a little bit of an overstatement, but they really have been dominant. The Panthers, looks like they've wanted revenge from week one when Manhattan High beat them. But since then, they've won nine straight games. And you can see why. They are just terrific. Tension is rising here. And there's the kick. That's Dwayne Newby taking it. Past the 20. He has some space. He has a big gap. And he is tackled around the 39-yard line. A spectacular play there for Dwayne Newby, but there's a flag on the play. So he found a gap there, rushed to the right side, and got about 20 extra yards there. Great return there for Dwayne Newby. Oh, and I think the call's against MHS, so they're going to go back all the way around the 17-yard line. That is a crucial penalty. Yeah, that does set them back quite a bit. That was a terrific return. So it really is a shame to see what the penalty did to them. Back pretty far there. Wow. So I thought they were going to be back at the 17-yard line, but it turns out they're at the 9-yard line. So terrible starting position here for MHS. Well, hopefully they can dig themselves out of this hole. Yeah, MHS needs to respond to that amazing touchdown drive, drive by Derby. Aslan rolling right, and that just goes to the line of scrimmage. Not much gain. So Carter Aslan tried to run there again, but got nothing. As he's got nothing all night rushing. Only about a yard there. And it's going to be second and nine around the 10 yard line for MHS. Yeah, this is MHS football on MHS Student Media. 
I'm Lane Lewison. I'm Jackson Short. For those of you just tuning in, Derby is leading 14 to 7 in this one. Just two very explosive touchdowns by Derby. One touchdown by MHS, but MH MHS has struggled a little bit to run the ball. They've had some good passes, but they just want to continue to do well on offense. Yeah, I say we keep the passing game up right now and then try to involve the rushing game later on. But as of right now, Derby defense is doing a spectacular job of guarding us tonight. Yeah, you can tell that the Derby Panthers just want revenge from week one. Oh, yeah. When we beat them. And since then, they've won nine straight games. That is an amazing win streak for from the Panthers. So both teams are 9-1. The winner of this game will play against the winner of the Washburn Rural Wichita East matchup that is taking place as we speak. 8.37 left to go in this half. MHS still back of their 10 yard line for second and nine. Jaden Hudley in the backfield with Carter Aslan. And Aslan will take it himself. That looks like a good run, pushing over the defender. Oh, and it's a fumble. The ball's out, and that will be recovered by the Derby Panthers. Holy so an cow. unfortunate play. This is not very MHS-like a fumble there, and I think that might be MHS's first fumble of the season. I think they might have had a couple, but the Derby Panthers... Uh, supporting crowd is going wild right now. They love to see their Derby Panthers have such a good first half so far, and that fumble was crucial. You wanted to see Manhattan get on a roll, but it is just stopped immediately by the terrific Panthers defense. Oh yeah, hats off to the Derby fans here tonight for showing out for their away team, and their away stands are practically full. Making noise after every single play, and here they go to start off their drive at just the 27 yard line. Yeah, what a great way to start out the drive. Braxton Clark, quarterback, has been great, and it looks like he will run and will maybe pass. He didn't quite get to the line of scrimmage, and that is a complete pass to number four, Colton Rudy, who got a touchdown earlier in this game. yards there and it's going to be second and inches here from Derby offense. Yeah, Derby has so many explosive players on offense. Rudy is one of them. Looks like we have an injured player. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. It looks like we do have an injured player. Dunnigan, the sophomore on MHS's defense. Uh, Dunnigan will be helped off. Looks like Logan Loggerman is going to sub in for him. And here we go, second and inches here for Derby. And that's a pass out to Derek Hubbard, who's still running. What an explosive play by Derek Hubbard, who gets in the end zone to put Derby up 20 to 7. What an explosive play for Derek Hubbard, a great running back for the Derby team. Derek Hubbard was terrific. The 5'8", 165-pound senior. Just with what an amazing, spectacular run that was. He just kept going, and this is what Derby has, speed. Incredible speed on their offense. Oh, yeah, speed and shiftiness is what the Derby offense is. They're two running backs stand at 5'8 and 5'4. And when you think, oh my goodness. Oh, it's blocked. It's blocked, and that will go nowhere. He fumbles it around, and it's still out. Wowzers. And eventually it is recovered by number 44 on Derby. So they, that was a terrible snap. The placeholder basically had it slip out of his hand. And, the, and they kept fumbling it around, and there's an injured player.
Yeah, yeah, that's actually the kicker that's limping off. That is not what you want to see at all. Jessif. So, yeah, we hope he's okay. We'll keep you posted on that one. Speaking of injury, Max Stannard, you know, of course, is injured with a knee injury. He leads us in tackles. I think part of the reason why we're having trouble tackling them is the absence of Stannard. Oh, yeah. I think that plays a big role here tonight as he's our team's leading tackler. And hopefully their kicker is okay because I don't think Derby has many other options for kickers. So they might be in a pickle here. Then only one loss, and that was mid-season against Washburn Rural. Now they're down 20 to seven. But they can certainly come back. Seven minutes left in the second quarter. And speaking of Washburn, they're playing Wichita East tonight, and the winner will take on the winner of this game for the final four. And that's Jessup. He was a little banged up, but glad to see him back out kicking. And that's Summerlin, who will run it back. He's found another gap on that right side to the 40. A really good return already to the 42. And that's where he stopped. And that is great field position once again for Manhattan. What a play there by Gabe Summerlin to find a gap and attack the sideline. And hats off to this Jessup kicker because he came back out stumbling, kicked the ball, and then got the tackle against Gabe Summerlin. Based off what I saw when he got injured on that field goal kick, I didn't think he was going to come back out, but here he is. So MHS is going to have great starting position here at the 42-yard line for first and 10. Yeah, that's really good starting field position. We'll see what Carter Aslan can do. He sends Morgan in motion to the right. Morgan will be a fake, and Aslan takes it himself, still running, bulldozing over those defenders. Just a really good run by Carter Aslan. So they're going to be moving the chains there around a 12-yard gain. And as you can see, Carter is so good at finding those holes and attacking them. He made about three guys miss there to get that first down. And there's seven minutes and 30 seconds left. And in my eyes, it's a need to score drive for MHS because Derby will be receiving the second half kick. Yeah, I like how the Indians started off this drive. If they can run like that, they can get down the field and possibly score some points, making the lead a little less one-sided. Here's a toss at the last second to Hudley before he's hit, and just a gain of about two yards. So that was Britton Pascal there, the linebacker, with a nice wrap-up tackle to prevent Jaden Hudley from getting some big yards there. And speaking of Britton Pascal, he leads the team in tackles at 9.7 tackles per game. A great player having a great senior season for Derby. Yeah, he is ha having a great senior season. And Hudley is to the right of Aslan. Two guys on the right, three guys on the right now as he looks that way. And whistles blow. It looks like maybe a flag or a timeout, one of the two. Looks like false start for illegal procedure against MHS. That's the second time tonight they've been called for that. Yeah, illegal procedure. Uh, penalties can really hurt MHS. We've seen a couple games where they've had quite a few penalties in this first half. They just need to recuperate and do some uh, close reads on what the Derby defense does. Penalties have definitely been hurting them this season. As we saw earlier, that Dwayne Newby 40-yard kick return got held back to the 9-yard line. Not what you want to yeah, see. Aslan alone in the backfield. It looks like he'll pass across the middle wow. into traffic. No one was really there. It was right in front of the O-line, and there was really no receivers. I'm not – maybe he just wanted to get rid of the ball or – I'm not sure what happened there because I thought there was a running back in the area originally, and then I looked and I just saw a lineman. I'm not sure what happened there just panicked and tried to get rid of it. So it's going to be third and 12 at the 50-yard line. Yeah, third and long with six minutes left to go in the first half. Once again, Derby will receive the kickoff at halftime. Manhattan wants to score before 
Halftime is up, and they will have plenty of time to do that if they can execute. Oh, and that is a hard hit, a late hit by number eight on Derby. Number eight is Gavin Fawn and Steele. Well, it looks like there's a pass interference by the defense as he hit him before he could even get near that ball. But as you mentioned, Carter did get banged up there, so maybe there's two calls against the defense. Yeah, both these teams just incredible. Very well matched up. But there will be a penalty against Derby. And Derby fans are not liking it. Indians fans are loving it. And that's holding on the defense. So a holding call defense. And Derby is trying to plead their case there. They're saying the ball was tipped. So MHS is going to move up to the 40-yard line now. Great position here to set up third and four. Yeah, a couple substitutions. Six minutes left in the second quarter. Third and four, let's see what they got here. If they can run the ball well, and that's a timeout, yeah. So Coach Schartz wants to talk some things over. 27 is the score, six minutes left in the second quarter. Third and four at the 40-yard line for MHS. And they're looking to score here. So far, it's been a decent drive. Penalties going on both sides. And the Derby fans are still loud on their feet. Really great show out here tonight at Bishop Stadium. comes the MHS offense back onto the field after that timeout. Jaden Hudley in the backfield. Morgan and Newby out wide. Third and four. Third and four, just a really big play. See how they can execute, maybe run the ball, and that is what they do with Carter Aslan, oh. who is stuffed. Dragged back and stopped immediately by the Derby defense. Derby defense has done an amazing job at containing Carter Aslan on his runs. As we've seen all season, Carter Aslan, once he gets going, he attacks the defense. And as he's been doing tonight, he's, he's been attacking, but they've been attacking back harder and stronger. Yeah. As you said earlier, Derby is looking for that revenge. So fourth and six, and it looks like they're going to... Derby definitely has a lot of momentum at this moment. I think they're going to go for it. Yeah, one pivotal moment can change the game. And MHS is on offense. The crowd is going wild. Morgan, and that's Aslan. Oh, he's going to throw deep. Is he open? Coverage. And he caught it. He caught it. Oh, what the play of the game. The absolute play of the game. That was Dwayne Newby who caught the touchdown pass. What a pass and what a catch along the yeah. sideline. Yeah, and he was well covered on that play. Lane, that was one of the best plays I've seen all season. All season. The best passing play I've seen all season, no doubt. As he was going down, fourth down, threw it up around 40 yards to Dwayne Newby. Right, tight in coverage. He was breathing in his face. The ball went right over his head, placed perfectly right in the bread basket for a touchdown. And now the score is 20 to 13 with five minutes left in the second quarter. And the extra point is good. 20 to 14. A great drive there for MHS to get things going. Yeah, and Vikander is two for two now on extra points. Well, so far this has been a spectacular game. Both teams firing on offense and defense, as we saw with the Derby fumble there and then the Derby touch. Now the MHS touchdown to respond back, and it's now 20 to 14. Yeah, just like we thought, a super close one. And it is 20 to 14. After the Dwayne Newby touchdown pass. Wow. 
and I mentioned we just need a pivotal moment, and that was our pivotal moment. Now the momentum is with us, and we'll see what the offense for the Panthers can do. Aries Finley and Derek Hubbard in the backfield to return the kick. Ryland Weikander on the kick. Receives it around the 10-yard line. Yeah, that's Hubbard around to the 25 to the 26 about. Yeah, that was an all right return. It's still mind boggling to me how they're two great players on offense. They're both running backs, and they're both under five foot nine. Aries Finley standing at five foot five as a freshman, having a great season. You love to see it. Yeah, the five five running back reminded me a, a bit of Deuce Vaughn from Kansas State. Oh yeah. Derek covered in the backfield with Braxton Suarez. And that's a handoff, and he's wrapped up. Hubbard is wrapped up by number 58, Clayton Frayne, who makes the amazing defensive stop. And what a great play there for MHS to get some momentum there. Clayton Frayne, I think that was a loss of two there. And Clayton Frayne leads the team in sacks as well with 5.5. Yeah, Frayne has been terrific this season, one of the best in the state, I would honestly say. So it's going to be second and 12 here for the Derby offense. And MHS fans getting loud. Yeah, at the 24-yard line, Clark will roll left. That's to Hubbard, the little toss, and a loss of yards on that one to set them back even more. Yeah, Derek Hubbard was looking for a big gain there, and I think he got tripped up by himself. And I think that's a loss of one, so now it's going to be third and 13. And the clock is still winding down, around 3 minutes and 45 seconds left in the second quarter. Yeah, really good coverage on defense. Braxton Clark was making a read there, decided to give it to Hubbard, but either of his two options of either running it or sending it to Hubbard were just completely corrupted by the defense. Here's Braxton Clark. Will he throw deep? He might run, but he will throw, and that's incomplete. Really good coverage on that play. That pass was to Colton Rudy, and it is defended well, very well defended. Amazing coverage there from Jonathan Willey to stop the third down play there. Braxton Clark was alone in the backfield, fired a shot downfield, and it was broken up by Jonathan Willey. Great play. And he's got to be careful that next time because Jonathan Willie also leads the team in interceptions this year with three. Yeah, Jonathan Willie has been excellent. That Dwayne Newby touchdown really changed the game for Manhattan. Oh, yeah, that was an amazing play. He just placed the ball perfectly as he was getting hit on a fourth and a crucial play. So three minutes, 30 And here's the punt going to about the 50, 45, and he's hit. That's a flag, an immediate flag, we know by Derby, hitting the returner before he could catch it. Well, that's the most obvious flag you could get. Two of the Derby defenders blew him up before he could even touch the football. And that's gonna be a crucial penalty again against Derby. Yeah, that was a bit of a miscue, that penalty. He really didn't fair catch it, and that was a pretty obvious penalty. And... MHS is going to be starting now at the 40-yard line instead of around the other 40-yard line. And this is by far the best field position for this entire game for Manhattan High. We'll see what they can do. They had that amazing pass last possession. Now they'll run it with Carter Aslan, who's wrapped up. Couldn't get anywhere on that one. Number 11, 11, 11 was Peyton Neptune. As 
I said earlier, Derby has done a great job at containing Carter Aslan from escaping the backfield for those big time runs. And Carter Aslan is leading the team in rushing yards at 134 a game, which is honestly amazing at quarterback. Yeah, Carter Aslan is a junior, so Manhattan will also have him next year. And that's a run by him. Speaking of Carter Aslan, but it's a Hudley. A late toss to the 35-yard line to Hudley. And he gets about five yards, I would say. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but Carter Aslan just got blown up on that play. I feel bad for him. He's going to have a feeling in his gut for the next few plays. Yeah, the Derby defense really is a hard-hitting team. Oh, yeah, the Derby defense, as I've said many times, and I'll say it again, they're playing so aggressive tonight. They're going to be laying down the big hits every single play. Two minutes left in the second quarter. 20 to 14 is your score. Manhattan has a real opportunity to score as Carter Aslan will look right. Pass, and that's almost oh intercepted my. through the hands of number 20, James Middlebrook. And that should have been intercepted, but just an incomplete pass. Yeah, you didn't see James was lingering in the backfield waiting for that pass to be done. As soon as he threw it, he rose up on his feet right in front of the, the receiver to block it. Almost intercepted. Would have been a crucial play there. And now that's going to sit up fourth and five for MHS. So big decision here. Yeah, I don't know exactly what Aslan was thinking. There's a bit of pressure, but maybe not the best place to throw the ball. And fourth down. Aslan is still out, maybe trying to draw them off sides. But, and there's whistles blowing. We'll see what this is. He spikes it. And timeout for Derby. That's the first timeout for Derby this half. And I think a well-used timeout. Maybe they weren't exactly sure or didn't like what they saw from their defense. Oh, yeah, smart timeout there for Derby. A minute, 48 seconds left in the second quarter. And a big play coming up here for the MHS offense. They're yeah. looking to get a score out of it here. Because if they do and they make the PAT, they'll be up by one after that Jessup blocked kick. And Derby will receive the second half kick, so they do need to score here. Both teams come back out onto the field. A crucial play here for MHS. This is the biggest play of the game, the most crucial on offense. It's fourth and five. They're out of field goal range, so they elect to try to get the first down. Carter's in the backfield with Charles Morgan. Not sure what's going on. Coach Schartz is uh, discussing something with the referee. I'm not exactly sure what they're discussing. I think it's the play clock. It's not starting. Yeah, the play clock is not starting. You're correct about that. And looks like they sorted that out. The play clock is back to functioning. And just a crucial play. Morgan sends in motion. There's four guys on that right side. And Morgan, oh, and it's incomplete. Off his fingertips, kind of a high pass. And that'll be a turnover on downs. A very crucial play. They tried to do that screen pass to Morgan as they do every single game, and they just could not get it. Morgan, it went off his fingertips, and there were two defenders waiting for him there. And I, I was waiting for him to catch the ball, and either way, he would have gotten blown up. So it's first and 10 here for Derby. Great starting position. A minute, 45 seconds left. And if they score a touchdown, that would be spectacular for them because they do receive a second half kick. It's 
20 to 14 is your score. Derby's got the ball at the 35 yard line for first and 10. Braxton Clark and Derek covered in the backfield. Sinzik on motion to the left. That's a handoff to number two. And he's stopped to the sideline. And there's a flag on the play. Yeah, laundry on the field. Derby's fifth penalty tonight. Really, really crucial penalties here. That moves the ball back to the 25 yard line. World so they're now moved back to the 25 yard line for Derby. And a minute 35 seconds left. Braxton Clark, son of head coach Brandon Clark, the left hander to pass. And that's on the ground. It looks like he caught that. It was close, could have been incomplete. Might have hit the ground. They're going to count it. The MHS fans are not liking that yeah, at all. I strongly disagree with that. It definitely looked to me like it touched the ground. So you mentioned Braxton Clark is the son of the head coach, right? Yeah. See, it's crazy how much similar teams are because Carter Aslan is son of a coach as well here on the same show. Yeah, absolutely. That is to the freshman. Arius Finley on the left side of the field, and he will, I think, move the chains. Yes, he will move the chains. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like there is a man down. They will tend to him right now. I think it's time for a score check of the Washburn Rural game. We'll get that to you in just a moment. Washburn Rural, well, it's actually a tied game right now. Wichita East and Washburn Rural tied 14 to 14 in the second quarter. So we'll continue to watch that very crucial matchup. So the Derby player is still down. So we're going to take a little time out here. 49 seconds left in the second quarter. Derby is looking to score. And looks like he was able to get up, helped off the field. Looks like that's number 58, Peyton Doble, the offensive lineman for Derby. And both teams are going to come back out on the field for first and 10 for Derby. And as I mentioned earlier, how similar teams are. In all their playoff games, MHS has scored a total of 90 points, and Derby has scored a total of 102 points. Really great show off for both these teams. Yeah, so Braxton Clark hands it off in a toss, another reverse, and another pass. Oh, wow. Just a really fancy play, showing what they got. That looked like pass interference, and that is pass interference. Ian McNabb interfered on that play on the pass. That was a double reverse flea player there. Not what I was expecting to see. You love to see those trick plays, and as you can tell, there was pass interference there against the defense, which is going to move the chains for Derby. And as you said earlier, penalties are crucial in this game. 36 seconds left. That gives Derby a bit of an edge here to close out this first half. Yeah, the Panthers tried to get a little cute with that play, and it really does pay off because tricky plays like that will draw penalties. And now it'll be first and 10 at the 38 yard line. The Panthers trying to score once again before halftime and there's 36 minutes until half. 36 seconds until half, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Man, we got a long ways to go. Yeah, Bra Braxton Clark. <laughs> 
a crossbow. About three yards there for Derby. Yeah, there was an initial catch and then stopped immediately. Well done and well played by the defense for MHS. 28 seconds left here. Derby offense to get something going. And they call their second time of the first half. So what have you liked to see here from Derby? Well, I'd like to see another uh, Deshaun Green pass because he really looked spectacular there to open up their second drive. Or a dare covered run. He's been spectacular as well tonight. Yeah, both those guys have been standout players. This is also really important for the Manhattan High defense. I think a nice short pass would go a long way here for the Derby offense because MHS hasn't done the best at guarding their wideouts. And even if they have, they've drawn a few penalties as we saw a few plays ago. Second and four here for the Derby offense. And whistles blow, there's a flag. Pre-play penalties, once again. Another legal procedure. We've seen many of those tonight. Penalties, penalties, penalties. That is the score tonight. Really crucial, and that's moving them back. 27 seconds left, and it's now second and 10 for the Derby offense. Looks like defenders move back, trying to. Triple threat on the right side for Derby. We'll see if they pass it to one of those guys. Here's Braxton Clark throwing deep, scrambling, pressure on the quarterback, and he is sacked. What a sack by number 20. That was Jonathan Willie there for the tackle for a loss. A great sack there. Two men wrapped him up, and he thought about throwing him away and then decided to go down. A really smart play there from Braxton Clark because I think if he did end up throwing that ball away, it would have been intercepted. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So after that crucial penalty there for Derby, they're now third and 20 almost with 18 seconds left, whereas they would have been around the 30-yard line by now. Jessup, their kicker, got a little bit knocked up and is injured, so he's got to be careful of him kicking long field goals here. So I think they have to go for the touchdown. Yeah, it's really chilly here at Bishop Stadium. We haven't really talked about this much, but the cold weather is definitely a factor. Oh yeah, I don't know how they do it there with short sleeves. Really playing a factor. I mean, frankly, I'm freezing my butt off. I don't know how you're doing it there. Yeah, <laughs> these are two really tough teams though. And Braxton Clark with 15 seconds left to go. That's dumped off to the freshman Finley who will run out of bounds. Almost a first down, maybe not quite. Too fancy and just run out of bounds to stop the clock with 10 seconds left for fourth and 12. Yeah, it's really cool that Derby has a player, Arius Finley, that's doing so well as a freshman, and he'll just continue to get better, and he'll be a real, uh, real threat here for Manhattan in this game. It is great to see a 5 foot 5 freshman running back doing so well. And Braxton Clark will roll left. There's a guy open, number 12. Will take the pass, and that's a catch. What a catch by number 12. Dalen Bledsoe. Dalen Bledsoe just got wide open on that left sideline. 
and moves the chains by a lot. And the clock runs out. That is into the first half. They tried to get another playoff, but they couldn't in time. And that really seems for Derby. Yeah, it's 20 to 14. This will be halftime for MHS football on MHS Student Media. I'm Lane Lewison. And I'm Jackson Schwartz. See you next half.
band will perform a classic rock hit from Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, the Beach Boys. Here it is. I get around. Instructor is Jerry Gittle, assisted by Megan Lugazer and Susan Kobal. Percussion instructor is Kareem Tippin. Dance team coaches are Kayla Holly, assisted by Rihanna Nelson. This is Chicago Cubs Hall of Fame left fielder and first baseman, sweet swinging Billy Williams, voice of the Big Blue Marching Band. Go Big Blue!
and this will be the start of the second half. As just a few score checks here. Olathe North, who's number 10 in the state, is losing right now, 24 to seven, against Blue Valley, who's in the lead right now. Another crucial game that we're watching right now is the 14 to four tie in the third quarter of Wichita East and Washburn Rural. So that's a really close game. We're about to start the second half. And my takeaway from that first half was uh, Derby was in command for a while there. And then a pivotal moment by Dwayne Newby who caught a very close touchdown pass to make the game closer. The score right now is 20 to 14, and we'll see what these teams do in the second half. Yeah, really great first half there for both teams, firing on offense, both sides. And my takeaway there was Derby's passing game really needs to be stopped and contained because they've done an excellent job at distributing the ball throughout every wide receiver and their running backs. A great first half for Derby and a great first half for MHS to keep the game close here. Yeah, these are two really good teams, and you can see in this game how close the score is. That reflects how this game has been. And now the second play on offense. If this happened, he breaks free. That's Hubbard, who will get some extra yards on the second effort. A good run by Hubbard. We've yeah. seen really good runs by Hubbard all night. Oh, yeah, all night. Derek Hubbard got loose there for about nine yards or ten yards there to move the chains first and ten here's Braxton Clark to Hubbard again and he's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage and a tackle for loss when he's pushed out of bounds a nice play there by MHS to stop the run and he was stopped by Chris Dunnigan for MHS, who has 5.5 sacks this year and one of the best defensive players for MHS this season. Yeah, he really has. And we'll see what the Derby offense brings here. Passing very accurate. What a dart to number 12, who's still running. Wrapped up by two def or three defenders we needed to get the man down. Now it's number 12, Dalen Bledsoe, the wide receiver, six foot, and he's a junior, and it's gonna set up third and eight here for Derby. Tried, tried to get that quick pass off, and really just got wrapped up, met in a, a puddle yep. of blue. Nevertheless, that was a nice throw. Braxton Clark will pass or run. Either one will pass, and that is a good catch, just wide open. That was Colton Rudy, who moves the chains to start off what has looked to be a really good opening second half drive for the Panthers. Yeah, not an MHS defender in sight there for that first down. An easy pass there to move the chains for Derby. And now they have great field position around MHS's 46 yard line for first and 10. And a handoff, oh, that tricked me. That was a good fake, but the ball's out. It looks like he was down before that ball got loose. And it looks like Colby Altavolt was there for the sack. To be perfectly honest, that fake handoff really tricked me, but it didn't trick the defense because they were there right on scene to make a clutch tackle, making it second and 12 at the 48 yard line. A great play there by the MHS defense. And I think Braxton Clark got away with one there because that was about a second away from being a fumble. Second and 11 here for the Derby offense. Clark looking downfield now off to his left. Oh, and a congested pass is batted down by Jonathan Willie. So a pretty accurate throw but just amazing coverage by the safety. Yeah, Jonathan Willie, great coverage there on the hook. As soon as he came back to the ball, Jonathan Willie met him right there and knocked the ball away. 
for third and 12 now for Derby. Yeah, Jonathan Willie has been one of MHS's most dominant and just dynamic defensive players. Leads the team in interceptions, and you could see his terrific coverage there. Now the crowd's getting loud for third and 12. Third and long it will be. Sends a man in motion, that's number 12, looking downfield. He decides to pass and almost intercepted. Jonathan wow. Willie was there once again. Jonathan Willie, great coverage there. Almost got sacked, backed up, decided to fire downfield into a swarm of defenders, and Jonathan Willie last second knocked it away. Now, Jonathan Willie, I think, honestly, he might be the best player on this defense tonight. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Every time, it's almost every time they fire the ball's way, it's getting knocked to the ground. Really great coverage here, and now they're going to be punting it away. And here's a punt man deep, standing about the 15-yard line, and that kick is good, really good kick, and to about the 14 or 13-yard line. So a nice kick there. And MHS is going to be starting at the 12-yard line. Not the best field position, but we've seen them in the situation before as they started off at the 9-yard line. And I think that was a touchdown drive. Just a quick fact. The MHS offense has scored more points in the first half than the second, but they will definitely want to change that here. And a handoff to the back, a gain of about one. Number 33 pushes up the middle. So Jaden Hudley was trying to get free there, only about three yards. Derby staying aggressive. And MHS still, I, I've noticed they haven't gotten the rushing game going at, almost at all. Yeah, their big plays have been passing, including their two touchdowns have been pretty deep passes two guys on the wide out that's Carter Aslan who decides not to pitch a good read by Carter Aslan deciding to take it himself and that of course will move the chains a great play there by Carter to decide to keep the ball and it's moving the chains now and it's going to be first and 10 for MHS at the 30 yard line 20 to 14 is the score. Derby is up by six. Eight minutes left in the third quarter. Yet yeah, 30 yard line is where this play will start. And that's a, he'll give the pigskin to Hudley who gets about a gain of three. Nice little run there for Jaden Hudley. Nothing much, but it's gonna set up second and seven here at the 33-yard line for MHS. Carter Aslan will hand it off to Jaden Hudley, who finds space. There's a big area in the field open for him, and he will be tackled around the 15-yard line. Just a terrific run by Jaden Hudley, one of the very best rushing plays we've seen in this entire game. Oh, yeah, you love to see it. MHS is finally getting that rushing game going with a huge play from Jaden Hudley, 20-14. to 14. He brought it all the way down to the 15-yard line in a massive Massive gain there for MHS. What a way to bring the energy in this second half. Like I said, every shot Derby fires, we're yeah, going to fire Hudley back. Hudley again. Yeah, exactly. Hudley again will get another run. This for just about two or three. It's really been a blast watching this game tonight. Such a great back and forth matchup against these two well contested teams. Both are 9-1, and one and both are on huge winning streaks. Both are very similar teams, and they've been dominating the playoffs so far. Yeah, they are quite similar. I would definitely agree with that. And that's Aslan, who takes it himself. Couldn't find a hole. Great stop by the Derby defense. 
Yeah, just got wrapped up and stopped there. Carter hasn't gotten his rushing game going tonight, but Jaden, as we saw a play earlier, he's gotten his rushing game going, and he's making it clear. Third and seven here at the 12-yard line for MHS. Six minutes left in the third quarter. Red zone offense has been a major strong suit, actually, for the Indians, who just have a knack for scoring with the run in this area of the field. This is third and seven. Jaden Hudley. That was a strong surge by Hudley, but he's wrapped up as soon as he got to about the line of scrimmage, which brings up fourth down. They will likely attempt a field goal. Yeah, that was a great tackle there by number 19, Dalton Hornback, the defensive lineman, to stop Jaden Hudley from getting any further and breaking free for a touchdown. So now it's going to set up fourth and four at the nine-yard line for MHS. A crucial play here to potentially tie the game up. Here we go. Yeah, this really is a big play. And it looks like a timeout from Manhattan. Well, smart time out there for Coach Sharps to talk things over and brew up a play here. Fourth and four for MHS. What have you liked so far in the second half? Oh, what I've really liked is Jaden Hudley. Oh, yeah. Just kick-starting this running game. We didn't see a ton of running in the first half, but now here in the second half we've seen quite a bit from the really speedy players on the offense. Oh yeah, you love to see it. The first half was all about passing and then opening it up with the Jaden Hudley. I think that was a 60 yard rushing play. Amazing play, amazing speed. Really setting the tone here for this MHS offense on a crucial fourth and four here. And I love how great this game is, just back and forth the whole time. And hopefully it ends up a pretty close game as we go throughout the second half. Just a reminder, the winner of this game will be playing the winner of Wa Washburn Rural versus Wichita East, which will give you the score updates for those later. And the crowd is getting really loud as the offense will go back out for fourth and four. Fourth and four is a huge play, and that's a handoff. Oh, and a pass, a try, and he's wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. That was Charles Morgan who caught that. Terrific job by him getting wide open and making this a tied game. The score is 20 to 20. Hold on, I think that was Ian McNabb who caught that in the end zone. Really? Yeah. The defensive player for MHS just caught a touchdown. You love to see a, a great trick play there. And Whoa. here's the kick. And the go-ahead extra point will give Manhattan High the lead for the first time in this game. They will take the lead, 21 to 20. What a great way to fire back at this Derby team. 21 to 20 is now the score, five minutes left in the third quarter. And we have ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. Starting it off with a great Jane Hudley run and then finishing it off with a trick play, a flea flicker to the defensive player, Ian McNabb, for the touchdown to make it 21 to 20. And Ryland Vikander is set to kick it off here for this MHS team. Again, it's gonna be Arius Finley and Derek Hubbard in the backfield. And we're gonna bring some score updates for you guys real quick. Uh, Wichita East and Washburn Rural are still tied at 14 in the third quarter. And there's the kick. A really good one past the 10 yard line and that's Hubbard who will sweep and that was a good stop. What a good special teams play by NHS. Tackling him way back at the 15 yard line. Now I like what Derby does there is they fake the sweep almost every time. Aries Finley and Derek Hubbard, they have that connection there. But sometimes you gotta think, you can't, you just gotta cancel that and just go upfield. 
because I think that lost them a few yards there. Now they're going to be set around the 15-yard line, not the greatest starting position. And now the MHS crowd is getting really excited after the Ian McNabb touchdown. And that's a handoff to the freshman with flags Whoa. flying on the field. Lots of yellow. I think that was a face mask there, if I'm not mistaken. Penalty flags flying everywhere. And it is a face mask against the defense. And that's a crucial penalty again. Five minutes left in the third quarter here, and they're going to move the chains for the Serbia offense. Yeah, that penalty was kind of costly. That's the freshman once again, stiff arms him, try to cut back, but he is stopped. What a great defensive play. Oh yeah, what a tackle there for Logan Loggerman. Again, he's subbing in for J.J. Dunnigan, who got injured earlier, and a great tackle there to stop Aries Finley from attacking downfield. Again, the five foot five freshman is very shifty and very quick, and once he gets going, he cannot be stopped. Derby trying to get their offense going in the second half. And that Braxton Clark will keep it rolling left under pressure, and that is on the ground and incomplete. He targeted Colton Rudy on that play, but no completion. It would have been a great play there, first down, but just a little short there as he was getting chased to avoid the sack. So it's going to be third and eight from the 34-yard line here. Manhattan really left him open. Good thing that wasn't the best pass because that could have been costly. Now third and eight, a big play. And Braxton Clark will roll back the lefty to number 21, who is hit immediately. Ian McNabb with the tackle. What a great pass there, and what a great hit by Ian McNabb. Tackling number 21, John Lujan, the wide receiver, the junior, five foot eight, 175 pounds. And a great short pass there for Derby to set up first and 10 now at the 46 yard line. Braxton Clark back to number 21. And once again, he's stopped. Number 27 had the tackle. We'll and that see was who that John was. Lujan again. And that was Logan Lagerman with the tackle, I believe. He's yep. doing a great job here, subbing in for J.J. Dunnigan, who's out as he's injured. Absolutely. Clark will look to the sideline. Waiting for the play call. The clock is winding down, five seconds on the play clock. And he gets it off. Braxton Clark scrambling to the left. He's under pressure. And that's oh! Jonathan Willie was there. Jonathan Willie caught it, and it looks like he was out of bounds. It looks like he was out of bounds, so not an interception. Really close, though. As I said earlier, I think the Player of the Game Award deserves to be written in Jonathan Willie's name. What a great play there. Almost intercepted. Really great coverage all night. Jonathan Willie is the man here tonight at Bishop Stadium. And his third and nine here for Derby, a crucial play. Triple set to the right. Braxton Clark looking left. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Oh, that was a close one. And another incomplete pass will bring up fourth and down. Fourth down, and it looks like they will punt it away. And I think that was almost intercepted again by Jonathan Willie. Really a dangerous player to throw near him. And it's fourth down, and I think they're going to punt it away. And Dwayne Newby is in the backfield set to receive a great defensive play here from MHS to stop yeah. Derby. Yeah, if I, were, if I were Clark, I would be a little more conscious about where I throw the ball because those were certainly two near interceptions. 
And here's the punt for Jessup. This is the second punt of the half, which is what both drives for Derby have ended in. And here we go, Manhattan. Manhattan's bringing all the energy, so much momentum going towards Manhattan. And here we go, looking to extend the lead, 21 to 20, two minutes, 30 seconds left in the third quarter. MHS here has a chance to extend the lead big time on the Derby team. Yeah, this is actually the fourth time that Derby and Manhattan have played in the last two years. Manhattan has won all three of the last three games against Derby. Here's Carter Aslan, a handoff to Morgan. We haven't seen a ton from him tonight, but a good little run, a gain of four. Yeah, we have not seen a ton of him tonight. And I think it's time for us to get him going because really he's one of the most spectacular players I have seen on this MHS team. Yeah, Morgan the senior has been very good. <laughs> so a nice little run there for Jaden Hudley to set up third and short for MHS offense. He was tackled by Gavin Fonseil there at the 30 yard line now, third and short for MHS. Oh, and teams are fighting for the ball, and that could have been a turnover. Was that just a mess up snap? And it looks like Derby will get the ball. Wowzers. I think Carter just dropped the ball there. It was a crucial play. Not sure what happened, just slipped out of his hands. And Derby defenders immediately jumped on the ball create a big pile and it looks like they do have possession of it now and they're taking over at the 29 yard line great field position here and a crucial moment in the game yeah this game has been back and forth from the beginning and now Derby has the chance to take the lead now at the 29 yard line where they will start their offensive drive Braxton Clark rolling left to the senior, and he bumped into his own player. That was Arreus, Arreus <laughs> Finley who hit his own player there. Well, it looks like Mario Salzer got in the way there. You don't see that very often. I mean, Arreus Finley was looking to cut and ran right into him. It was just like a, he hit a brick wall and right down to the ground. Yeah, less than a minute in this third quarter. Just 45 seconds left in the third quarter. So now that's gonna set up second and 14 for this Derby offense after a huge miscommunication. And flag will fly. So delay a game penalty here against Derby and they have taken a lot of penalties tonight, as I said earlier, very crucial here. And that's gonna move them back all the way to the 38 yard line with just 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, the Derby offense has been a little bit on the struggle bus this half. They did really well in the first half, but haven't got much going at all. Here's Braxton Clark. He'll throw deep across the middle to the wide open number 12. Looks like he caught it. So number 12, Dalen Bledsoe, the junior, with a nice sliding catch there from Braxton Cook. And a great pass here. Third down and short now. And Manhattan shows blitz. Oh, and it's dropped. And that looks like Derby will recover their own drop. <laughs> this is really amazing. That would have been the third fumble of the night. It's just been a spectacular back and forth matchup to watch. 
and the clock is winding down and the fourth quarter is going to begin. What a great third quarter to begin the second half. 21 to 20 is your score here. I'm Jackson Schwartz. And I'm Lane Lewison. And we're back to start off the fourth quarter here. Derby is scrambling. Clark under pressure, and that'll be incomplete. He almost caught it, but on the ground will be the ball. And this MHS defense has definitely turned it up in the second half, especially Jonathan Willie. And. It is now MHS's ball at their own 30-yard line. If I had to use one word to describe the Manhattan High defense this game, I would say gritty because they have showed up and they are doing amazing. On that run, Jaden Hugley got about eight or so yards. Yes, MHS defense has definitely turned it up tonight, especially in the second quarter. Their passing coverage has definitely turned up notch and has been excellent. And Jonathan Willie, in my eyes, has been the player of the game. Yeah, Charles Morgan is lined up wide on that left side of the field. Jaden Hudley is in the backfield with Aslan to his right. Aslan takes it himself on that right side and he breaks free to the left to the middle of the field and that gets past the 40 yard line which moves the chains. Nice play readjusting. He didn't like what he saw on the right side. Took off to the left for a gain of about five and he's moving the chains now for MHS around the 41 yard line for first and ten. So slowly but surely, they're moving down the field. Manhattan sends a man in motion, and that's a Hudley handoff for just one yard. A great stop by the Derby, Derby defense. Oh, yeah, great stop by Derby defense indeed. Jaden Hudley only got about one yard there to set up second and nine for this MHS offense. Gets a yard out to the 42, where it will be second and nine. So Washburn Rolls now leading Wichita East 21 to 14 in the third quarter. And just a reminder folks that the winner of that game will play the winner of this game. And Carter takes it himself and gets banged up there. Only a gain of around four. So that's going to set up third down and five here for this MHS offense. Middlebrook had that tackle. We've seen quite a few tackles from him. And slowly but surely, the, uh, the offense has been getting down the field. But now a crucial third and six. And Carter Aslan ranks fourth in Kansas 6A in total yards. Yeah, coming into this game. That's a handoff stuffed. He is stuffed. That's Jaden Hudley, who doesn't get anywhere. Oh, yeah. That was an amazing play by the Derby defense there to prevent him from gaining big-time yards. 
it was almost like there was an elastic band holding them back there from gaining any more yards. And that's going to set up, I think, fourth down, right? Fourth yeah. down and six. It was like a fly crashing into a yeah. glass window. <laughs> it's like some invisible force there stopping him. But a great play by the Derby defense. Oh. And Derby jumped. Again, crucial penalties, Lane. It's plays like this that really make you think what could have happened different in this game if those penalties didn't happen. So now MHS is going to be fourth and in inches instead of a fourth and five. So all they need here is a little tish push or Jaden Hudley run, whatever they want to do. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left in this fourth quarter. 21 to 20 is your score. Here we go. Oh, and quite a shift in formation right before the snap to Hudley, who takes it, and he got more than he even needed. Six yards to gain for Jaden Hudley, who comes out big for his MHS Indians. Yeah, great play there. Very textbook, heading it up the middle, and the offensive line created a great gap there for Jaden Hudley to take it upfield for a five-yard gain for first and 10 now for MHS with eight minutes and 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And they're now at the 44 yard line. Carter Aslan. So just a reminder that Carter is leading this team in rushing yards per game at 134. And right there, he got about three. And now it's going to be second and seven. So here we go, second and seven at the 40-yard line for MHS. Jaden Hudley sprints for about two yards, I would say. Yeah, so it's going to be third and short here for MHS. All they need is a short run. And I'm liking the tempo here. Some nice short plays. Winding down the clock, crucial here in the fourth quarter. Giving Derby just enough time to get some plays off on offense. But really great textbook football here from MHS. Yeah, seven minutes left to go in this game. It's getting really close. 21 to 20 is the lead for MHS now on uh, still on offense. Here's Aslan creeping up the middle of the line, right between the guards. I'd say he got the first down there, but they're marking him short, just inches, super close, and the fans do not like it. So it's gonna be fourth and the size of a finger. All they have to do is reach the ball across inches away yeah I think that was a good call by the officials he did look a little short so now they attempt for fourth and one. Oh, and he pushes will he get it it's close it looks like he did pick up the first down nice play there from Jaden Hudley or number 23 I think that was Landon Dobson there on the handoff just needed about, honestly, just inches there. They got two yards, good enough for the first down. And they are at the 33-yard line for first and 10 with just six minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Off to the right side is Morgan. To the 30-yard line he will go, which brings up second down. Now I love seeing them give the ball to Morgan. I feel like he hasn't been involved that much tonight. Jaden Hudley has been their primary go-to guy, and he has definitely showed up tonight, as we saw in that 60-yard rushing play. Ian, Ian McNabb, the defensive player, still in the game on offense. And Aslan will take it wrapped up. Looks like the defender, number 11. Peyton Neptune grabbed Aslan by the right leg. 
stopping him from getting any more yards. So it's going to be third and six here for the MHS offense at the 29-yard line. Big play coming up with just five minutes left in the fourth quarter. The clock keeps winding down. Oh, and Aslan will keep it himself. He will not reach the first down. This brings up fourth down. This makes the next play even more crucial. Yeah, fourth and four. And as I said earlier, again and again, Carter is trying to escape, but he can't get much yardage against this Derby defense. So I think they're going to have to resort to some passing plays here coming up. And just four minutes left in the fourth quarter. MHS has done a spectacular job at winding the clock down. And they're going to give Derby just a little bit amount of time to get a drive off. Yeah, this really is prime playoff football. And whistles will blow. I think a timeout will be taken. So timeout. Coach Sharps wanted to talk things over. And a great drive here for MHS to get the ball moving all the way down to the 29-yard line. And they took about four minutes off the clock. And they're going to give Derby the ball, I'd say, about with two minutes left. Hopefully they could get off a touchdown drive here to make the score 28-20. to 20. So if Derby does end up scoring, they're going to have to go for two because that blocked PAT we saw earlier. So we're going to get a quick score update on the Washburn Rural and Wichita East game because the winner of that will play the winner of this game in the Final Four. And it looks like Washburn Rural is up big time now, 28-14 to 14 against Wichita East in the fourth quarter. So the winner of this game will most likely be playing Washburn. And if it is MHS, they did lose to Washburn. Just yeah, their only ago. loss of the year as Dwayne Newby was targeted on that play. And it is dropped. That is unfortunate for MHS, who will not convert on fourth down. Yeah, a crucial play there. And that's going to give Derby the ball with just three minutes and 49 seconds left. So we need an MHS stop here or else the game may be over because as we just saw, MHS took about four minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. Here we go, big time play here for this MHS defense and the Derby offense. Flags fly. And it might be a false start. A legal procedure again, that's the third time tonight. And they're going to be at the 24-yard line now. That's Hubbard. A good run by the speedy running back. Yeah, Derek Hubbard getting good yardage there for Derby as MHS just got some momentum. The fans are getting on their feet as they need to be. Crucial plays here to end off the game. Three minutes and 42 seconds left in the fourth quarter. A three set receiving core to the right. Braxton Clark looks to the sideline. See what the play call is here. Four men are deep for the defense. And he is tackled. He almost got the first down. He might have got it, and it looks like he will move the chains. So that was number seven to Sean Brame, as we saw earlier, with that big touchdown pass to him. I like them getting him involved, and they're going to go no huddle. Three minutes, 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Braxton Clark pitches it to Hubbard. Oh, he's pushing. He really wants it, and he's tackled. It looks like... 
Clayton Frayne was there to be one of the guys that tackled him. So Dare covered about five yards there, and this Derby offense is really bringing the momentum here. Oh, and a perfect pass, an absolute dart to number 12, Dalen Bledsoe, and that moves the chains. The Derby crowd is going wild. As, as they, they get should closer be. Closer and closer to their end zone. As they should be. Amazing textbook football here on that route. He hit the hook and he saw him wide open. Number 12, Dalen Bledsoe, for a 10 yard gain, goes out of bounds, stop the clock. Amazing offense here for this Derby team. Yeah, Braxton Clark has really stepped up. 2.54 left to play in this game. It's really going down to the wire and a nail biter. And that's Hubbard who breaks free, spins, but it then is tackled after about a three yard advance. So, so far on this drive, I've noticed we get about a five yard rushing play and then we get a big time passing play. So next up here, I might be expecting a pass. Yeah, that is a pass, good call. And you're exactly right. So the same thing they went to two plays earlier, back to Dalen Bledsoe on the hook, and I think he got out of bounds. So it'll stop the clock, two minutes, 30 seconds, for first and 10 at the 21-yard line. This is crucial football here at Bishop Stadium, late in the playoffs. This is as prime time as it gets. Braxton Clark, this tough leader, quarterback on this derby team. Left-hander as well. We'll pass it up the middle. He is caught. A complete pass it will be. I was number seven there to Deshaun Brame again. It's gonna be second and two with two minutes left in the fourth quarter and the derby crowd erupting there as it did look like it was gonna be intercepted and he come out of nowhere and jumped in there and caught that ball. A great catch. Yeah, Hubbard's in the backfield. That's a handoff to Hubbard. Oh, and he hits a wall. Tackled. Really good tackle mm. by, I think that was number 22. I think that was Colby Altavo. Yeah, Colby Altavo. A great tackle there to prevent some big time yards and get some momentum back for MHS here. It's third and three, a big time play. Colton Rudy is lined up deep on the left side of the field. He's one-on-one -on -one with Jonathan Willie, and just a short yardage play. And I think they got the first down there. And they oh, did. Oh, just barely enough. And it's gonna be first down, a minute and 30 seconds. Clock is still winding down. And I think MHS has one timeout left. A little pitch to Hubbard. Oh, and the defender was closing in on him. That was nice number tackle. six. Number six there, Chris Dunnigan, a great job preventing him from getting to the end zone there. A big time play there to prevent Dare covered. And second and two at just the 10 yard line here for Derby, a minute and 17 left. It's second and nine with one minute and 17 seconds left in this game. A huge play, and that's to Hubbard, and he's, that's a good tackle, a really good defensive stop by Manhattan. So MHS is not gonna call any timeouts. Derby's not gonna call any timeouts. The clock is still winding down. Just 60 seconds left here. 21 to 20 is your score and it's gonna be third down and two at just the 10 yard line. This is prime time football, folks. And it looks like MHS does end up calling a timeout. 51 seconds left, 21 to 20 is the score. And here comes a big play. So an outstanding drive here from the Derby offense. I've liked what they're doing. They mix it up. They have a rushing play and then they have a passing play. And Deshaun Brame and Dalen Bledsoe have been getting involved well late in the game, which is 50 seconds left. So 
So what do you think of this Derby offense so far in this fourth quarter? Well, Braxton Clark, quarterback for Derby, is really carrying the team on his back. Oh, yeah. In the third quarter, it looks like MHS was really show, slowing him down, especially Jonathan Willie. And then fourth quarter, they're turning it up, and he's made some great reads and great passes to get him down all the way to the 10-yard line with just 50 seconds left. Yeah, Hubbard and Bledsoe have been really good as well. Here we go, big time play here. The crowd is standing in anticipation for third and eight. And oh. Braxton Clark ran there along the sideline to just the two yard line. And he got out of bounds, 44 seconds left. And that was a nail biter there for MHS. They cannot let him in the end zone. Yeah, he nearly got in the end zone himself. He kind of lost room when he stepped out of bounds. Now this is really nail biter here. Fourth down and goal. Here we go. This is prime time football here. Grady Jessup will attempt the field goal. And there's flags, and that play will be stopped. But he did make it, but it does not count. Yes, yeah, so there's flags there on that play. Not sure what happens. But it is against Derby, so it's going to set him back even further. And that that did ice him a little bit there. So now they're getting pushed back even further. And Jessup, the most crucial kick of his career, 42 seconds left. And he's got it. Right and good. The Derby fans are going wild. The best kick of Grady Jessup's career. And he's a senior, too. Oh, yeah. And just 38 seconds left. MHS needs a miracle. Now, Derby's acting like they've won the game, but this MHS offense is definitely lethal. This is it. This is like a Patrick Mahomes moment right here. Walk on the field with like 17 seconds left. Yeah, Aslan can really prove his amazing leadership. So MHS in the huddle coming up with some big time plays Again, here. The is they're going to receive a the kick. It's 23 to 21. So, so if they do get a field goal, they will win the Michael game. Doors. But they are looking for a touchdown as well, obviously. Just 38 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 23 to 21 is your score. Derby is up by two. And the winner of this game will be playing Washburn Rural. Kicking off for Derby, number 99, Grady Jessup. What can you do with 37.9 seconds? The Manhattan offense will answer that question right now. As Grady Jessup, who just made the go-ahead field goal, will kick this one off. It's along the right side to Dwayne Newby. And he's hit right away at the 25 yard line with 35 seconds left and the Derby crowd is going nuts. A huge play there for Derby to get him some momentum and it just keeps on building up. MHS has got to find a way to fire back to end off this game. First and 10 at the 25 yard line. Yeah, this will be the definition of hurry up offense. They don't have much time at all. And no timeouts left. Okay, there's Aslan and Tanubi. That's a complete pass for about seven yards. Very smart play. Very smart play. 
as we saw earlier with Dalen Bledsoe and the Bra and the Braxton Clark connection, that hook gets him along the sideline and gets him out of bounds for quick yardage, and I really like what they're doing. Well executed there. Aslan rolls right to Newby, who will not catch it. That's an incomplete pass. And I think they were really pushing that to get that Dwayne Newby connection again, but really he had nothing there. And Carter running back to the huddle now with just 25 seconds left at the 30-yard line. And they've got to get 70 yards here in 25 seconds to close out the game. Manhattan needs a miracle. Haslin <laughs> rolls right. He's going to throw deep. He airs it out. Charles Morgan will not catch it. Well defended by number 15. That was number 15, Easton Splain there with great defensive coverage on the play. And Charles Morgan, if he did end up getting free, we all know that that would have been a touchdown. 18 seconds left, zero timeouts, 23 to 21 is your score, and it's now fourth down. This could be it. This could be the end of the season for MHS as we know it. Here we go. Carter Aslan drops back. He's going to pass. A pretty accurate pass, and that's dropped. That ends the game. Derby will advance. Wow. A spectacular game for Derby. And don't get me wrong, a spectacular game for MHS as well. And that's going to close out the game. 13 seconds left. And it looks like Derby will be advancing and playing Washburn. And the fans are going to say their goodbyes to this MHS team. Really a spectacular season for this MHS football team. Yeah, an amazing season from start to finish. But Derby comes to Bishop Stadium today. And they were like, you, want, you beat us the last three times. Oh, yeah. It's not going to happen another time. And they really made an impression on this entire crowd taking the dub. You know, obviously, we want MHS to win, but hats off to Derby for coming and showing out. And you could tell their fans wanted it. Their whole team wanted it. And they were playing very aggressive. They wanted to get revenge, and they came in, and they achieved that here at Bishop Stadium. A great Friday Night Lights here show up. And Derby will be advancing to the Final Four to play Washburn and Roll. A great game. 23-21 to 21 is your score. I'm Jackson Schwartz. And I'm Lane Lewison.